So that was a very interesting one. But yeah, we've, we've been keeping an eye on it, and we've been trying to sort of infiltrate his barricaded mind with some critical thinking, and it's been very difficult trying to get him to change his perspective on things. He's kind of in it. But the main reason we did it was not to change him, but to alert the general public the dangers of inviting these people into your home. Because these people aren't going to be changed. This is what they do. This is what they believe. Um, uh, you're not going to change a hardcore atheist any more than you're going to change a hardcore Christian. These people are the same way. They believe what they believe, and damn it, that's the way it is. So what we need to do is alert people, hey, these people can cause you a lot of damage by coming into your home. And that's our main message with that. Just like people like this, they're educating everybody on their tours to come out and disturb things and cause vandalism and, and uh, disrespect things, uh, along with teaching them to go into people's homes as well. So that's the kind of stuff that we want to put a stop to. Um, any other questions? By his, anything doesn't have to be about uh, uh, the subject at hand. Who interviewed you? Some chick. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> She's a big What's her name? Yeah, the problem is, is since we're not. Usually oh, well, whoever, uh, she's actually their anchor, their desk girl. I can't think of her name. Desk girl doesn't sound <laughs> <laughs> She's the woman behind the counter. Uh, uh, I don't know what her name is, but she was there. She, she was very good. Yeah, she's really good. Yeah, she's very good. I can say that much. Yes. Uh, when you went on the tour, did, was the camera hidden or? And oh no. Find That's the nice thing about this is we're another paranormal team, and we're there to collect evidence like everybody else. And we so, did. So yeah, rather than <laughs> wander around trying to hide a camera or something like that normally would do. And we're taking pictures of them, walking around with video cameras, and they're too stupid to realize we're not doing anything but taking pictures of them. Asking stupid <laughs> questions that they're answering very stupidly. Um, so it was real special that it's going on around them. I was actually on the, the one guy knocking on the closet and it was pretty much like this the whole time with the camera just watching them. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely absurd how, well the problem is, is the group that, that we did the sting on before, when we did the investigating the investigators thing, uh, and Pure Paranormal, they have really one goal, to be on TV. And they love any kind of attention you'll give them. Not like us. We're not <laughs> enough. It's not a big deal for us. We have, well, it is kind of funny because uh, we, get, we get contacted by production companies all the time. Hey, we want to do a TV show about you guys. Or not since yes. The news, not since you this um, But we don't go out seeking it. We don't try to make our own TV series. If you go on YouTube, you'll see all these groups have their own TV series on YouTube. And uh, they're really desperate. They're contacting production companies all the time. We don't, we don't really care. We've turned down more production companies than what we care to even mention. But um, we just enjoy making a big joke out of the whole thing. You know, in a sense, except for these kind of things, that we get pretty offended. Yes? I'm very curious as to why they chose you guys to come in for the expert help. Because, I mean, we decided we before this that we weren't going to answer any of your questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me, let me see if I can answer yeah, this. Please. This is interesting. There's one long sentence for this. Before we picked them, because we were looking at all sorts of different groups, uh, we got an email from them. Which I never responded to because I don't want to deal with people like that most of the time. Saying, we see that you've been to the melting pot in Littleton, which we have been, and we've kind of been kicked out because we said that they didn't have ghosts. Well, see, so, you know, we always like, anytime we do public speaking that's not in front of skeptics, we always say, now, we're not saying that ghosts don't exist. We can't say that a place isn't haunted. And then we say, except for the melting pot. Except for the melting pot. <laughs> 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 so they, they kicked us out there once back. Yeah, well, he, he contacted us because he had all of these great PVPs that he got there. He wanted us to listen to him and tell him they were cool. And I didn't. But apparently we were the only group that had any kind of contact with them. I don't know why. So well, when you do it, what do you get pretty patient? Obviously. What's that? For years, you guys have the reputation. We do, but if you look up ghost hunting or paranormal in Colorado, we're one of the first ones that comes up on Google. Now, to give you an idea of how well this guy uses Google, <laughs> I, I told him that the demon that was in this house was Pazuzu. 
Now, if anybody knows who Pazuzu is, he's not a Christian deity at all. He has nothing to do with Christianity. But this guy, uh, like Logan, and Logan played Rich's son in this whole saga, and, and he was the ne'er do well death rockin' and son. And uh, he asked the guy, he, you know, we were just getting ready to do this investigation, and he asked this guy, aren't you scared? No way, bro. I got the light of God around me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and so we know exactly what his bent is right there. And so when we told him Pazuzu, he had no idea who it was. And he went to Google, typed in Pazuzu, went down until he saw the word Lucifer in the same sentence. Clicked on it, got his information. Pazuzu was one of the generals that was kicked out of heaven along with Lucifer. Now Lucifer took Pazuzu with him as one of the 13 generals that he took. Now, in, in mythology, none of that's true. It's a Mesopotamian god. Uh, he's he's the, the, you know, god of pestilence and, and uh, the lord of the flies, you could say. Um, so the funny thing is, we looked at this website. It was the Marvel Universe. <laughs> Howard the Duck number three. Howard the Duck number three is where this information came from. He doesn't read anything but what he wants to. He focuses on uncertain senses and doesn't apply anything else around it. So we're this very reputable group. He doesn't realize that we're a very reputable group who's out to kick his ass. So he gives us a call and says, please, you guys are so good. And we know that you specialize in cleansings. No, but okay, I mean, you know your guys. <laughs> yes. As they did, and your research skills, they would immediately realize that Karen and I are directly related to you. Logan and brings up a good point. What we did is we had we had rules. How many of you know what Project Alpha was? Okay, quite a few. It, it was kind of a skeptical scam, I guess you could say, uh, where Banachak and another gentleman by the name of Mike Edwards and James Franny fooled a bunch of scientists into believing that they had real psychic powers and they could bend metal, all that kind of stuff. Well, they had certain rules that we applied. And that's if anybody in this came up and said, is this a fraud? We were to say yes. We gave real names. Uh, we didn't fake anything like that. So they could have looked up Karen. They could have looked up Logan. They could have looked up Rich. And when you look up Rich, one of the first things that comes up is a picture of all of us together at an IIG meeting. You know, he could have had us pegged like that. Did no research whatsoever. So we just sailed on through, uh, and uh, no problem. We stung him like crazy, and it, it should have been a wake up call. People do a little bit of investigation, you might not have stung. Hasn't changed anything for these people so far. Makes it easy for us, though. Yeah. Anything else before we get out of your way? Yes? Yeah, so we're talking about being disrespectful to go to the cemetery and not taking the ghost of people around. When does it become Listen, Baldy, we try not to. <laughs> we do our best. <laughs> best. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, it's the only people like you that gave me this. Um, now the thing is, is that's a really good question. He asked, when does it? When do we cross the line into being disrespectful? All the time. <laughs> and, and, and Dr. Dr. Levy actually uh, gave us a really good way to gauge that because we were like, we came to him and we said, oh, we did something so unethical. And he said, yeah, but was it funny? <laughs> Does the funny outweigh the unethical part? So if, if we stick to that, we seem like we're doing okay. So, um, but we do we rely on you people to keep us in check. So. We gotta thank you for that. That's why we come up here and stand in front of you to help keep us on the straight and narrow. Because to be honest, without the help of, of Rich and Karen, we probably wouldn't have gone to talk to Dr. Levy about the possibility that we could be psychologically hurting this guy by convincing him he just got possessed by a demon. <laughs> we thought he was a drama queen and we weren't gonna, you know. But because we've got good skeptics that uh, we, we like to keep around us, that helps us keep from going too far. And so you guys really appreciate your skeptical friends because they're liable to save you from doing something really stupid. Michael, <laughs> 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 thank you very much. <laughs>